This is Robot here from ScooterWest.com, also known as Vespa Motorsport. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to find and set the timing on a Vespa, or a vintage Vespa that has points on it. Um, as you know, you kind of look at this, if you work on other motorcycles, you usually find a mark somewhere that shows you where the timing is. Well, Vespas, they never actually put the mark there. You got to actually find uh, top dead center and time it yourself. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, some of the tools you'll need, you're going to need a degree wheel. Kind of have a lot of holes drilled in this one, been using it for years. Uh, we sell these on our website. Another thing I use is actually a real strong, I think, neodymium magnet. These are found on, you know, actually in a hard drive of all things. I take apart a scrap hard drive. This magnet's super strong and it, it will actually hold the degree wheel right to the flywheel nut. Works really good. There's other ways to go about this where you can bolt, bolt this to it, but just use the magnet, it's nice and easy to use. Um, you'll need a fueler gauge. This is kind of a small set I have and a standard automotive part. And basically the typical gap on the points on these is between three tenths and five tenths of a millimeter. And typically if you're setting up new points, I set it around, around four tenths and then I'll time it from there. Um, spark plug socket, small frames kind of need the specialized tools kind of tight in there. Another specialized tool you'll need is the piston stop. We actually sell this piston stop on our website. This one's got an adjustable uh, pin on it. There's also a fixed pin piston stop. And you could set this and actually some engines are timed with how many uh, millimeters before top dead center. Uh, that's what this uh, veneer caliper kind of adjustment is on there. But we're not actually going to use it. We're just going to use it to stop the piston. Uh, flashlight to kind of look into the points hole. Flat screwdriver to make adjustment to the points. It's got a small flat, flat screw in there. Uh, to make the marks, a uh, fine tip Sharpie or even better yet, you can use a scribe. Like this isn't the best, but this is like a, a pick, but you get a carbide scribe to actually scribe the mark in the flywheel and also on a reference point on the engine case. Um, the statically time it, you could basically hook up a basic light to do that. You know, basically disconnect the coil out of the circuit. I'll show how to do that. You need a 12 volt battery of some sort. Use a old H4 halogen bulb. A couple test leads that can be found at electronic store or wherever or made. Um, and after I'm all done, I'll actually strobe it to see if, if, if my timing's dead on after checking it statically, but you could use a, you know, electronic timing light. Uh, you can get a basic one. This one's a little fancier than you really need for something like this, but we'll strobe it right after we're done setting the timing. So first of all, I got the fan cover all off. Um, you got to find top dead center on this. You know, kind of as you're rotating around, you know, spark plugs in there, you're going past the hard kind of compression stroke and that's around top dead center. And then, you know, it goes back around. Go ahead and remove the plug. And the small frames are kind of a little tight in here, the, where the plug is. V7HS, short reach on any of the smaller bikes. A uh, long reach is found on, you know, the, um, any of the, the large 200cc, 180cc scooters. Um, also the Stellas use a long reach. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the timing wheel on there. Just kind of wherever for right now, I'll kind of approximate top dead center. But I'll kind of eyeball the center here. Put the magnet right in the center and it actually holds it right there. Uh, next thing I need to grab is actually a little piece of stiff wire and I'll actually tie it to this. All right, so I cut a little piece of stiff wire. You know, you use one of the, the few fan bolt screws. Go ahead and tighten that down. And basically this will be our little reference, you know, using a, you know, you could point it right to the, the degree wheel. Right now it doesn't matter. I haven't even put the piston stop in there, but I'll go ahead and thread the piston stop into the, the spark plug. You know, and you don't really need to thread it in all the way. It's just there to kind of stop it in the same spot on both the before and, and after the um, top dead center. So set the needle back at zero, right about zero right there. Kind of holding it right, putting a little pressure on it. Okay, we're going to turn it around and we'll see where it lands on this other end. 
So that's going to be a little bit easier. Right now it's at right, right about 52. So half of 52 is 26. So basically we'll go ahead and pull the piston stop out. And so our first was zero and then 52 and then 26 comes in right about there. And that's your perfect top dead center right there. So right at 26. And now, now that you have top dead center established, you can actually go ahead and mark that on the flywheel. And I'll go ahead, I'll just do it with a Sharpie. Sometimes it's easier to do it with a, a scribe. You'll get a, a finer line, but with a Sharpie, it's a little easier for the camera to see. So right there, and I'll call that top dead center. And I could put a little T right next to that mark. So there we go. Now we'll go ahead and establish the, um, the, the, the firing point of our timing. Uh, this scooter fires at uh, 24 degrees before top dead center. Uh, every Vespa is a little different. Kind of the older low compression ones, they have more advanced. The higher compression, newer Vespas have less advanced, you know, like a, you know, a PX150 or something is like around 18 degrees. You got some of the old bikes are as much as like 30 degrees. You look at some of the reference online, there's scooter help. Uh, many of the shop manuals will kind of cover the timings of the various models. Obviously, if you have a cylinder kit on there, it's going to have less timing than what a stock bike is. You know, typically on a lot of Melosi kits and Polini kits, you're like in the 16 to 18 degrees kind of range. But basically, the motor, it turns around, you got top dead center, it's going to fire before it hits top dead center. When you hear beat before top dead center, it's going to fire somewhere right around here. So we'll go ahead and set that back, the T, have that mark, put the, the degree wheel back there and actually set the reference to zero, right like that. So zero, and we wanna uh, find out 24 de degrees before top dead center. So, so right there is before, and after you pass zero, that's after top dead center. So you want 24 before, so. So 24 is right there. Again, we can put another mark right here. And that's gonna be our 24. This is, these older bikes, you can go plus minus like, you know, two degrees. If you're building a race bike, you probably wanna to try to get it within, within a half a degree of timing. But something like this, if you're within two, you're pretty safe and they'll run as, as much as 10 degrees off. They'll run just fine, but probably not the best idea. It's a good idea that the establisher marks um, and now that we have that marked, we could take the um, degree wheel off, take our, our um, have it set at 24 degrees right there. I have the, the actual rubber plug out here. I disconnected the wire at the coil and the type of Tesla, you'll need like a high wattage bulb, like a 55 watt bulb that's got real low, low impedance because actually you're gonna be conducting through the, the coil that generates the source for the ignition coil. But you wanna see when the lamp gets a little brighter and that's when your points close. So if you use a small lamp, it's not gonna really show up. But I'll go ahead and kind of just jam one of the wires in this it's a little test lamp I have just sitting around. Got our battery here, it doesn't matter if it's plus and minus. Go ahead and ground it somewhere, right that. Tie that to the battery. So that's the case. And then do one more test lead to the actual bulb right here. And there you go, you can see the, uh, it's kind of hard probably seeing the camera, but you can see the, the bulb actually go brighter and dimmer. If you turn your ignition switch on, you'll see it a little bit better. So go ahead and turn the ignition on just to make, make you can see the difference a little bit better. See right there? That's actually the point right where it's um, firing right now. That's static timing. It's kind of actually energizing the coil, kind of making it bounce a little bit. But right now it's pretty much dead on at 24 degrees. And you, Basically in here, I'll disconnect the light so you can see in there a little bit easier. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you could actually see the points in here. 
Yeah. And, and the actual contact breakers are actually opening and closing in there. And this little screw that's back here, that's actually what loosens the, um, the stop for the, um, the points themselves. So I go ahead and just loosen a little bit. You don't want to loosen it where the points just want to open and close freely. Basically, I just loosen it up a little bit. And I'll kind of show you. Right now, I already, I already set the timing on this, and it's about four tenths of a millimeter. You can actually go in there and wedge this right in here. It should just barely drag between the points when you uh, slide it in and out of the points when the points are open. You know, so you could test it. And obviously, once you go, you know, go past, then they're going to be closed right there. So, right now, I'll show you what happens if you open the points. If the points are too open, hook up the light here. So I went ahead and just manually opened the, the points. Your timing is going to be too advanced. So we want to retard the timing by actually closing your points up. And I'll go ahead and you can actually wedge a screwdriver between that screw in there and the, there's like a little, little spot where you could... Oops. That's yeah, still pretty open here. Sometimes you got to tighten the lock nut just a little bit. Otherwise, it wants to open the points up. So right now, I have them too closed, and they're not actually not any opening. But you could set the um, set the mark right at T and kind of watch it as you um, open the points. Right there should be it because I just saw the light go in. Dim. And right now, it's still a little bit too advanced, so I go ahead and close it just a little bit. And just real fine little little adjustments. And there we go. It's still a little bit retarded, but you just make small adjustments. You basically want the uh, the light to transition right right when you hit the mark there. So right now we're still. I was actually looking at the T, so we still need to open. Right now it's firing too 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 close. You know the the timing is is. Um, under 24 degrees, so we need to open the points a little bit to advance the timing slightly. But, you know, it take, takes a little bit of um, just messing with it, you know, to get it just right. Open it just a little bit more. I bet you that's right, right there. Eh, still a little too advanced. Go back just a tinge. There we go. Then go ahead and tighten the lock nut. One thing you gotta keep in mind, sometimes tighten the lock nut actually changes the timing ever so slightly. And it's a little bit retarded. I wanna just advance it just a little bit. So sometimes you could actually give it still a little twist with a, the nut to, or the screwed lock tightened down. And again, it's kinda of hard to see what I'm doing, but I'm just making small adjustments. Again, you're watching for the light. There we go. So that's, see the transition of the light is right when it hits that, that mark, you, the light changes brightness. And that's right where you want it, setting it statically. So, okay, so we're all set here. Disconnect our light, hook your coil back up. So there's our 24 degrees. And again, you wanna start with fresh points if the timing's all over the place. You may have a, a worn out con condenser or points on the thing. So let's go ahead and thread the spark plug back in. Get that. Connect the, um, the terminal to the, the spark plug itself. The ignition's already on. Go ahead and hook up my timing light. I mean, some timing lights have an internal battery. This one, you need a battery. This scooter doesn't have a battery, so I'm just gonna hook it up to this battery right here. Um, many uh, timing lights, they'll have a direction of the arrow that points towards the plug. So the wire is going towards the plug. Do it right there. You wanna definitely make sure you keep this out of the um, flywheel. Timing's uh, right at 24, and you can actually rev it up a little bit. You can ignore the flutter. Sometimes they have a little bit of flutter, but it's firing right at 24 degrees about. So. All right, so that pretty much concludes setting the timing. 
Uh, definitely want to make sure you have the rubber plug. Again, you want to have the points within the range of four tenths of a millimeter, or uh, basically three tenths to five tenths, but a good starting point is four tenths. If you can't, uh, if the points are outside that range, you're going to ne either need to go in there and manually advance or retard the actual uh, stator plate. And there's a screw screws that hold the stator plate on. You put the sir clip right in here and that, you know, loosen the nut and that will extract the flywheel or some models you'll need an actual extra extractor to pull the flywheel off. Uh, hopefully that kind of helped out kind of the mysteries of set and timing on these things. Uh, see you all later. Hopefully ride with you sometime. Have a good night.